Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we are going to build off the last lesson of talking about the idea of molar mass of elements and we're going to parlay that into figuring out the molar mass of an entire compound. Um, it's, it's very simple if you don't want to show any work. Uh, if you want to show any work, uh, it, it's a little bit more complex, but it's just really a matter of keeping track of units and sig figs. Uh, but the basic idea, very easy. Um, and then, you know, just a matter of showing your work completely. Uh, so we have the backstory of our characters. Uh, the mole is, of course, named after Amadeus Avogadro. That's nice. Not uh, uh, Amadeus. And so the molar mass for molecules goes under the same uh, ideas that you would expect for elements. It's all built off the law of conservation of mass. Remember that the mass of the reactants has to equal the mass of the product. So when we're creating compounds, uh, the new compounds created cannot exceed the mass of the original components. Sort of like Legos. If you put a bunch of Legos together, the mass of the uh, final build has to equal the mass of all the constituent Legos. And so all you have to do is know the molar mass of each of the constituents and how many of each constituent you have, and you can total this up. Um, so don't make this more complex than it needs to be. You know, again, so think about, again, for uh, H2O, uh, we've got the molar mass of hydrogen twice and the molar mass of oxygen once, because each of those are you know, 1 or 16 grams per mole, uh, respectively. And so if we were to total that together, uh, water would be about 18 grams per mole. And remember, a mole is uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. In this case, water molecules. And so it's really a pretty simple idea. And so we can certainly uh, go through a more formalized uh, approach to this. And so, um, again, we're going to use this as an as a, as a, uh, opportunity to strengthen factor label skills and unit manipulation and things like that, because those skills are definitely going to come in handy later when we get into more complex things like stoichiometry. But first things first, figure out the correct formula. If you do the formula wrong, then you're not going to get anything else correct. Um, and then figure out how many of each element we have. Again, we're going to go under the assumption that we have one mole of this substance, no matter how much we actually have. And then um, given one mole of the substance, uh, the subscripts will equal the moles of each subspecies. And then we're going to do a series of one-step factor label problems to determine the grams of each, and then we're just going to total up the grams. Um, again, given the assumption that we have one mole of this stuff, then that entire gram calculation will be the grams per one mole of the substance. And again, I'll show you how to do this very quickly, um, but, but having a more formalized thing is really going to allow people to follow your work and you'll be able to catch mistakes very quickly. So for now, I would, I would recommend you go through a longer method. Um, if you're short on time, you know, uh, you can certainly cut corners. And so what we'll do is we'll go through one example of molar mass. And so again, feel free, like always, to pause the video before I show the next step and then see what you can do. So go ahead, pause the video and uh, uh, write down the formula for barium nitrate. Welcome back. <laughs> um, so barium nitrate is going to be BA parentheses, NO3 parentheses 2. Don't forget your parentheses if you have more than one of a polyatomic. And so again, we'll, we have one barium in there, two nitrogens, and six oxygens. Now again, if you were short on time, um, you could simply go to your periodic table and add up the molar mass of one barium, add up the molar masses of two nitrogens, and add up the molar mass of six oxygens, and add those all up, and that would be the molar mass of barium nitrate. And so if you're ever on a test and you don't need to show work or anything like that, that's the quick, easy way of doing it. But if we're looking to make sure the units work out and we're looking to practice our factor label skills and setting up problems, uh, then we can go through this and show all of our work. And if you can show your work for these problems, that means you truly understand what's going on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of one-step factor label problems, taking each of those mole amounts and converting them to uh, grams. Now again, in all these problems, I usually just pull off the mass to the hundredths place, uh, just because I think it's, uh, you know, might as well stay consistent. But you can go off as far as you want. It's up to you how far, how many sig figs you want past the decimal. So anyway, in each of those cases, uh, we've got correct sig figs here for each of these three, uh, three multiplication problems. Remember, the 1, 2, and the 6 are not going to limit us because those weren't measured against a scale. We are assuming we have perfectly 1 mole of barium, 2 moles of nitrogen, and 6 moles of oxygen. And so once we get the grams of each, uh, we can then total them up. 
um, and then I would have 261.35 grams. Now technically, uh, that, that says just grams, but remember what we said before, that you can now add a unit back onto it, as the koala is gonna point out, because we can assume that, remember, this was one mole of this substance. And so uh, you're gonna end up with 261.35 grams per mole. And so units don't usually magically appear, but they don't really magically appear either, because we went under the assumption that we have one mole of this. Um, and, and, before, and before we end, I just wanted to let you know that there is certainly one run red herring people can throw in problems like these, and they might say, hey, you have 15 grams of barium nitrate. What's its molar mass? Uh, don't fall for that. Remember that uh, any mass amounts they give you is totally irrelevant to the ultimate molar mass of barium nitrate. Molar mass is an intensive property. It's, it's independent of the amount that you have. And so an easy way to, you know, really try to see if you understand what's is going on is to actually give you a mass of this and, and see if you get tripped up and try to use that mass in there somewhere. But the mass you have is absolutely irrelevant because the molar mass is a constant amount. Because again, it's the same way for elements. If you look on the periodic table, uh, the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 uh, AMUs um, or Daltons per atom, uh, irrelevant of the number of atoms you have. So don't get tripped up by that. But anyway, so that's it. That's how you do a molar mass. Uh, super easy to do, super easy to practice. Again, if you're just uh, doing this quick and dirty uh, for a test or something like that or a multiple choice, you can, you can certainly skip all that work. Uh, but, you know, you should be able to show all the work for a problem like this. And that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching uh, the lesson today, and uh, have a great day.